but look at that. Oh. Oh. Dude, what's, what? And she died next door. And she died here. In, in the house. house. Oh. She was here in the house. Come and talk to us. got to Guthrie, Oklahoma. This place is known as one of the most haunted towns in the state due to a very colorful history. Guthrie also is home to a very large, very famous uh, Masonic temple of the Freemasons. So they were doing their ceremonies and their magic and whatnot there. But tonight we have a very, very special investigation at the most haunted, supposedly, location in Oklahoma raided by lots of different groups and paranormal investigators. The Guthrie House. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the f***ing Guthrie, the Guthrie what House? The what is that? was I thinking? Where'd that come from? <laughs> what the f***? Tonight, we are going to be at the Stone Lion Inn. I'm not going to give you guys a lot of context before we get there, but we're about to arrive in five minutes. We've been driving all day from White Rock Lake in Dallas. Beard's growing out. Hair's kind of parted on one side today, randomly. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah. What the f is that? Where? This thing. Oh, it's a driving. Weird. So, uh, yeah, we'll report back to y'all when, uh, when we get there, but... Welcome to Historic Guthrie. Welcome. To the Guthrie House. <laughs> what the hell? Is that a weed restaurant? It is. <laughs> I don't think that's meant to look no. like weed, but it I think is. It's a cactus. Yeah, but it's it definitely looks like a some flower. Oklahoma is surprisingly like um, a very big cannabis growing state. Here's the dispensary right here. Uh, <laughs> funny enough. It is. And as the owner of Stolen Inn was telling me, just kind of jokingly, she said, so Jeff, let me ask you something. Do you have any pain? And I'm like, well, I, I, no, I just, yes or no. Do you have any pain? Well, I guess yes. Okay, you get your marijuana card. It, it's kind of like that easy. So it's just like any kind of pain. You know, my, my back hurts, my, I got headaches. Ah, oh, dude, I got a really bad headache right now. Are you serious? <laughs> uh, <laughs> can of bless. There you go. <laughs> Dude, this is a cannabis town right here. You know what it kind of reminds me of? What? It reminds me of the area of the Villisca Axe Murder. I can see that. You see that? Mm -hmm. Down here is, is what it kind of reminds me of. Yeah, this is creepy. There it is. It's much bigger than I thought. Yeah. You know? Wow. That definitely looks like a haunted house. It does. <laughs> if you were to right ask me. Here. Oh, look, you can go way up on top. Look at that. It's kind of like the old days, uh, if you're by the coast, where you have the cap, the sea captain's house. It, do, it does have a New England yeah, it does. style look I to it. I wonder what the background is on it. There's the lines. I wonder, well, I wonder where we should go in. Should we go in here? There we are. Strange double shot right there. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Doing sound check. Check. One, two. Um, Where's the drone? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Hi. I'm Becky Luker. I'm the owner of the house. And you are? Colin. Glad to meet you, Colin. Jeff. And Jeff. Nice to meet We've you. We've talked so many times we, on the phone. Yeah. Come in. Come in. All right. Do you know why we have two doors here? Uh, no. No. Well, 
a lot of people think this is like an entryway or a mud room or something, but it's not. In Victorian times, the lady of the house, in the morning when she was ready, she would come and open this door. It has a curtain on it. So that people passing by in their carriage or their little electric car could see that the door was open. That door will not have a curtain on it. And that's so you can see if this one does. So if this door is open, it means we are receiving guests. But if this door is closed, they can see it from the street. And it, you don't even knock it on the door. It would be a breach of etiquette. Hmm. And that's Victorian etiquette. I did not okay. know that. Yeah. Wow. Come on in. What a beautiful, beautiful house. Thank you. Thank you. I bought this in 1986, and I came over here from Santa Fe, New Mexico. And my intention was just to buy this house and turn it into a bed and breakfast. But I didn't know it was going to be the first bed and breakfast. You should never be the first one on the block to do anything. It's not a good business plan. So when I've told people what I was doing, they thought I was opening up a house of ill repute. They thought it was bed and breakfast. And <laughs> I was opening up a whorehouse. So it took a little while to get over that. But we opened it uh, about seven weeks after I bought it, after we put in eight bathrooms and did a complete remodeling and opened it as the first bed and breakfast in Oklahoma. Wow. And it wasn't until shortly after that I began thinking this house has issues. So Shall people I? actually thought you were opening a brothel. They did think I was opening a brothel. This used to be the territorial capital. Guthrie was the territorial capital of Oklahoma and it was the state capital. Well, um, I used to be a school teacher and I, you know, if you teach high school, you gotta throw in some sex or they won't listen to you. <laughs> what do towns have in common that have either a state government or a federal government and towns that have a military base? What is the common denominator? Loneliness. It's a hotbed for prostitution. Prostitution. Yeah. Yes. So if you go to towns that have a military base or capital, there'll usually be one, one street along the way which is going to have like a bar, a liquor store, a pawn shop, and a massage parlor. <laughs> all the way out to the base and all the way back. Same, same to, uh, is true of uh, cities that have a state capital. Lots of prostitution. Kind of like Austin, where I'm from. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. So this room was the Houghton's living room, but it was also their library. And they have, we have leaded glass here on the bottom shelves. Before we go into it, can I have you explain who the family was? Yes. This house was built by F. E. Houghton, who came with the land rush of 1889. And he and his first wife built a house that used to be on the east side of this one. And uh, they moved in and had four children, and she died. And his second wife had two more children while they were living next door. In the meantime, he had amassed a huge fortune in the Oklahoma Territory. He had the very first cotton gin. He was the founder of Cotton Oil Company. He had three mercantile stores, eight grocery stores, and the first car dealership. So he was wealthy. Wow. And in 1906, they ran out of room with those six children and they commissioned this house to be built. And it was built by the same gentleman who was here building the Carnegie Library. So it's well constructed, well engineered. It was started in 1906, it was completed in 1907. They moved in and had six more children. Wow. And all of those children survived except for a little boy who was uh, died early on in his probably infancy. I don't know anything about him. But there was a little girl, and she her name was Irene. She was born next door. When they moved in here in 1907, she was seven years old, and she contracted whooping cough. And what I've been told is that probably the maid over-medicated her and she died. At the turn of the century, they were using opium and codeine and cough syrups, and many children died as a result. And she died next door? And she died here. In, in the house? house. Oh. She was here in the house. Irene. Yeah, Irene. That's yeah. She's the little girl who haunts our house. But there may be others, because this used to be a mortuary. So let me show you the next little item. 
By the way, I gotta interrupt you. Yes. This is a beautiful room, and I love that red light over there. <laughs> that is a very nice touch. I mean, the, the lead glass. I had, those, mm -hmm. I had those doors put in because I really wanted to seal it off. That goes into the gentleman's smoking parlor. So oh. I'll tell you about the rooms as we go through them. Okay. Now, down that hallway, I'm, I'm going to not take you down there because it's uh, my bedroom and, I, uh, <laughs> and it's probably not made. But see this pocket door? That goes into the parlor. Mm -hmm. This would be, uh, in that room, would be the ladies' morning parlor. Not morning like you're sad, but morning like in the morning, you go there. It's your office, and a woman in those days would have, in her office, she would be doing the books, and it would be important for her to keep a ledger. Every expenditure that she made would go into a ledger. If she gave the children 25 cents, you know, for whatever, that would be registered in her, le in, in put in her ledger. And if she gave $5 for the maid to go buy groceries, that would be in the ledger. Everything that was spent was put in the ledger. Women kept the books of the house. Now, isn't this a lovely table? I didn't find out after I bought this house, this was the only piece of furniture left in the house. Now imagine this. I'm going through this house with the second owner. I'm the third owner in a house that's now 113 years old. And the second owners, the Walkers, I purchased this house from them. And I'm going through this house with Mrs. Walker, and she was a lovely lady, very sweet. And this t table was still in the kitchen, back against the windows, and she was using it as a buffet, and she would cook big dinners for her children. Uh, on Sundays, they would come home for you know dinner, and uh, after dinner, you throw a tablecloth over it, and everybody comes back later for supper. You know that's five to seven come and go on a Sunday night. So I come in here, I am in the kitchen, and I said, "Mrs. Walker, aren't you going to take this table? All the other furniture had been auctioned off. This was the only piece left in the entire house." And I said, "Aren't you going to take this table?" And she says to me, no, sugar, we're, we're, we're downsizing. We don't have room for that table. But you had admired it when you see here. We thought we'd leave it for you. Would you like to have that table? I would love to have this table. It's so unusual. Yes, it is unusual. Is it a baker's table? Well, it certainly could be, Sugar. I'm giving it to you. You just use it any way you want. It'll be your baker's table. She knew damn well it was an embalming table. <laughs> they often called the tables that were like this a cooler, a cooler oh. table, because it would help bring oh. the temperature of the body down. Very thick. Yeah, and it's very thick. It's a porcelain enamel. It is a porcelain enamel, yeah. 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 It takes uh, six guys to move this. Wow. So I didn't find out for three months that this was an embalming table. Yeah. And when I did, I decided, well, I'll move it out in the hallway and we'll use it as the bar. <laughs> and so now, when my guests come for the murder mysteries or whatever, if they bring alcohol, we set it all out here and we use it as a bar. And that's another form of pickling. <laughs> right? right. Yeah. It does make you wonder just how many yeah. uh, bodies would have been. Know. You know, it was a funeral home. The Houghtons fell on hard times, and it became a funeral home. The Houghtons still owned the house, but the Bo Weevil struck, and their whole fortune was tied into the cotton market. So they decided to um, move to Enid, where they had a mercantile store, but they didn't want to sell this house, so they leased it to Smith's Funeral Home, and this became a mortuary. And the Smith Gooch people are still here in town, and they remember when their grandparents owned this. And uh, as a matter of fact, the, the guy who works on all of my electricity is from Smith Gooch Electricity. <laughs> yeah, and he's a, he's a Smith. So it's from the same family. Wow. So they're still here, still around. This is our dining room. And we can seat um, 18 if they're intimate, 24 if they're just kinky. <laughs> <laughs> so we usually, if we have to, we seat 24. And we could sleep in the house 13. Wow. So lots of people just come and do the murder mysteries or whatever we're doing. This room, which my son is using as his office right now, 
is a gentleman's smoking parlor. But this room would be used, uh, the gentleman of the house would have a big couch in here, probably leather and a couple of leather chairs. He'd light a fire in the fireplace. And that's a Baptist bar. It has a lock on it. And um, if, the, uh, if the Baptist minister is coming, it would have a curtain across there and you would close it so they couldn't see it. Hmm. Really? Well, if the Catholic priest is coming, you open it up. <laughs> For sure, I agree. For sure. Yeah. My mother yeah. played uh, Duplicate Bridge. You know, yeah. very, very seriously. She's a master, and she's 94. Oh, and but growing up, we I went to parochial school, uh -huh. and um, the priests would come to our house to play Duplicate Bridge, and it'd be Monsignor, and you know, yeah. and they were drinking and smoking and swearing, <laughs> and I was like in grade school. I mean, like, yeah. and I was afraid oh, of because I had to do. I was an altar. Go I was an altar. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an altar boy going to school. I'm an altar and Monsignor is swearing and smoking, drinking whiskey. I'm like, oh my God. You know, <laughs> yes, is there, is there access to the basement? Oh yes. Can we go there next? <laughs> we can if you just won't shame me for having such oh, a many. No. This was, you know, I told you I moved no. back here in no. January and I brought all this no, stuff. No, we're not even. That's not even. Well, I mean, we it's a mess. We filmed in derelict mental there. asylums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is nothing. go down and turn off that fan so it's so noisy. Fine. This kind of reminds me of a farm. This is a 2,000 square foot basement. I let my guests come down here after spending the night. The ones that spend the night get to come down here and go up to the third floor. Sometimes it's been kind of bad. Guys come down here and then they come upstairs and ask me to marry them. <laughs> they think about this and they think, oh man, yeah, this is the ideal man cave, you know, and they right. start placing the, where the pool tables are going to be, where the flat screen TV over there and that rotund wall over there. I've gotten a lot of really good offers for this basement. <laughs> None of them for my body. They just want my basement, <laughs> not my body. So, <laughs> so what's, yeah. the, what's the history of, of the basement? Well, it, it was apparently when the Houghtons lived here, they had a married couple who lived with them. And he did all the grounds work. And I think she was, uh, was the housekeeper. They also had a cook. The children would get to play in the basement or the third floor. In the winter, that would be what they would do, is play down here on the third floor. You can't, in those days, you couldn't go to the third floor after May. During the summer, it would be so mm -hmm. hot. And we're I just now imagine. having it having it done. But it's 2,000 square feet. And right now, it's just got all my wood over the here. the original uh, mortar and so forth? Yeah, this is all, original. all original. Yeah, and see, th look at that rotund. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, wall over there. I mean, this would make a fantastic restaurant. You know? Oh, yeah, wouldn't <laughs> it? <laughs> wouldn't, I thought about that, too. Yeah, I thought about turning it into a restaurant. Really? <laughs> I had a restaurant for a short time, but I had it upstairs, and it was just a limited menu thing. It was whatever I'm cooking is what you're eating. Yeah. That's a very yeah. limited... So, as the, <laughs> as the funeral home, do you know, would they have utilized this space? Only for storage. They actually did not do... Uh, the embalming down here because that that uh, staircase is too treacherous. Yeah. Oh. And there is another exit over here, yeah. but it has very high steps, and you couldn't put Granny into a coffin and carry her up those steps are just too strenuous. Mm -hmm. They actually did the embalming in the kitchen. But still, people have had a lot of experiences down here. Yes, they have. Can you go into those a little bit? Um, you know, I had, when ghost hunters were here, I think they must have made somebody mad because one of the sticks over here, I have some uh, framing, not framing, but some uh, decorative trim. trim. And one of them came flying out and I got hit in the face with it. And uh, they had they have a number of things happen down here. It's, it's kind of active. I, I think we're gonna now come Michelle has that told here. you about yeah. this. Where did you, she, you know where she saw the? Yes. My name is Michelle Smith. I've been working with Becky for 34 years. I have did housekeeping, cooking, everything she ever need down here. I do it. I used to make the bed, and every once in a while I come back, it's like somebody's laying in it. And I used to think it was the boys playing around with me until they moved out. 
And when they moved out 10 years after I'd been here that long, I was noticing it was still doing the same thing. I'd make the bed and like somebody be laying in it. But one evening, Becky and the kids had left to go run some errands, and I was doing laundry in the basement. I come back up, the door was locked. I try to get out, but I kind of panic, banging on the door. For some reason, Becky must have forgot something. She came back and she let me out. So when the second time it happened, it was like months later, I'm down there doing laundry again. I go down and uh, I'm coming back up and the door's locked again. This time I didn't panic as much as I did the first time because I knew then I could go out the back door because it's a back door in the basement. And while I'm doing laundry, and it happened a lot, I would see a man standing at the second column downstairs in the basement. And it felt like every time I turned around, he's watching me. I even thought I'd seen him sitting down with his legs crossed in the basement. It got to the point where it was so scary that I didn't like going to the basement anymore because he was always, always felt him down there in the basement with me. My other experience I had was Becky had, like I said, Becky had moved over to the White Peacock and she wanted me to stay here at the house with the guests. And uh, we have third floor, that's where she used to stay. And you can actually lock the doors to White. I can, you can lock it, we have double locks. Well, I locked the door, then I went up and I locked the other door and I get in the bed and I kind of fell asleep and I felt someone get in the bed with me. And I kind of scooted over, thinking, you know, just my imagination a little bit, but I felt like it scooted back closer to me. And I turned to, to over and I said, Becky, I don't think this is appropriate. <laughs> I don't know why I just felt like, and it dawned on me though, I said, I locked the door, there's no way she could get in. And I was so scared, I just kind of covered my head up and fell asleep. And in my sleep, I felt like I wasn't asleep, but I was asleep. And I somehow end up in the basement. And I end up in the basement, and it was this bucket, and this water was poured out of the bucket, and then the bucket was set down. So when I woke up that morning, because I didn't feel right about it, and I said, if this really happened, it wasn't right. You know what I mean? So I go downstairs to the basement. The first thing I did is went to the basement and I seen that and I was like, oh my God, this really happened. It was really weird and I couldn't ever shake it, but I felt like I was in the basement with the ghost at that point. Do you know where she saw the... Yes. I used to have, I used to have two big tables down here where she would be folding clothes and they were out this far and she would be folding clothes here and she would see this man, this is how she's described it to me, that's kind of a peripheral vision thing of somebody back there. And we call that the back of the basement, but that's actually the front of the house. But we call it the back of the basement. So she would see some man back there and she told me uh, later that he had a tall hat on and that he was smoking a cigar. So who do you think that would be? Mr. Houghton. Really? We found a picture of him, but apparently, I think he wore, he, uh, from what I could understand what she was saying, he had a tall hat on and she would be folding and she'd see this. She'd turn and it wouldn't be there, but she'd turn back and it would be a kind of a peripheral vision thing. So this is kind of a hot spot of activity in the house, is the basement? The basement and the third floor. Basement and the third floor. Yeah. Okay. Remember the child who died here was seven years old and that the third floor was their playroom. Mm. And that's where they spent their winters. Makes sense. The children played there, or down here, they would, the boys would have this to play in too. Definitely has a heavier vibe yeah. down here. Yeah. I'm okay. Yes. This is the master bedroom. Mr. Houghton and Mrs. Houghton's master bedroom. And they had a private little bathroom here. And this room, which would have ordinarily been a lady's dressing room, Mrs. Houghton used it as her nursery. And she kept the kids a little longer than most. She kept them until they were five. So the last child she had was, I think, Russell. I met him, and so he told me that it was around Thanksgiving time, and they had 
plucked a lot of turkeys before Thanksgiving and they'd sewn all of those feathers into a shirt and to make wings. And then they put it on Russell and when he came out, they said, come on Russell, jump off the balcony, you're gonna fly. And they pushed him, <laughs> he uh -huh. didn't fly, he broke his arm. Oh. <laughs> you know, good he didn't That's die. Awesome. Yeah, thank God he didn't die. But, but yeah, she kept him a little bit longer than most people would. Most people would keep them in the nursery until they're about two. Right. Yeah. She kept until they're five. But you can understand why now. You didn't want to loot. <laughs> you shouldn't want to release them to general population too soon. <laughs> You're trying you to keep to them alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you got to fend for yourself, kid. <laughs> so, what would be the activity? Um, Hot spots on this floor. Where's the most frequently? Well, this was the room that when ghost hunters were here, we saw the shadow coming across and it came right there. And we were all standing here and it just kind of looked at, it looked like it had a face and it just said, Grant, get out. And it was a real deep, heavy voice and then it just disappeared. It was really freaky. I mean, they were freaked, I was freaked. But we had no cameras. This was the oh, first walk through. Again, the same way I felt when the lights went off. Mm -hmm. And now I'll tell you a ghost story yeah. out here in the hallway. My other experience, I was cleaning the bathroom in the wedding suite. And all of a sudden this dress just walked past me. And I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get out this room? Because I got kind of really scared. I was in the kitchen preparing food. I was chopping vegetables, getting ready for the night. Earlier that day, before I was chopping the food, earlier that day, I kept hearing a lot of walking. I would blast the TV so I could tone down the sound of the house. And I just kept hearing it more and more. And I said, that's kind of odd. The house kind of seemed to be very busy. So I came down to chop my vegetables because I felt like the house was just too busy. And the process of me chopping vegetables, I started hearing door slam. So I first heard the first door slam, and I said, oh, that's odd. Because you need to understand, I lock the door when I'm here in the house by myself. Because I need to make, I need to feel, I can't tell when I, the door's unlocked, I can't tell if a real person's in the house or not. Because that's how real the walking is to me. And I was like, well, I know ain't nobody upstairs. I kept on chopping, then I heard another door shut. I was like, God, somebody really must be upstairs. And by this time, almost every one of the doors just start shutting, like just shut. So at that point, I, so I pulled the table towards the back door. I was chomping and Becky coming. She said, what are you doing? I said, your house is really acting strange. Doors are steady slamming and I'm not going back up there for a while. But I had quite a bit different experience in this house. Uh, like in the kitchen, sometimes I'd be in the kitchen by the stove and I can hear somebody throw a fork or a knife into the sink and when nobody be in there but me. So I have experienced a lot of little different things by sounds and seeing things out the corner of my eye, seeing him in the bathroom in this room here, just staring. One time I was upstairs and I was coming out of the wedding suite all of a sudden, I just seen the door just completely shut into the bordella. And I was thinking, how can I get past this door without it coming out to get me? I used to, I just had all kinds of different experiences, you know. I think those are some of more of my moments. I've seen her walk up the staircase in her dress, just the tell of her dress, not her, just the tell of her dress. I always see the tell of the dress. I never see her as that, you know what I mean? But just the tell of her dress as I'm doing things. So you don't like to go up to the third floor anymore? Oh, no, not doing, definitely at night I don't go up there at all. And for what reason? Like I said, when I was, uh, when she moved to the White Peacock, she wanted me to stay here at the house with the gas and something got in the bed with me and it wasn't her. Is there anywhere in the house that we could walk to that you could show us where you saw something or experienced something? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, uh, I was coming from here and I actually seen the tell of her dress go up the stairs. But I never did see her. But I seen the tell of her dress come up the stairs. But I didn't follow her out now. I didn't do that. <laughs> and then when I was in the wedding suite, I had to do this after. 
It don't mess up nothing. <laughs> okay, right in here. I was in here and I was cleaning out the tub and all of a sudden I seen her dress just walk past. Right here. Uh-huh. Yes. So you But this chair wasn't here at the time. Yeah, so you saw something walk just mm -hmm. right across this doorway. Mm -hmm. You know how you have them long dresses back in the day? Mm -hmm. That type of dress. Yeah. One time I was in here and I was just doing something. I was probably cleaning up. And what was so weird, I never paid attention, but one time I thought I seen him walk through that door, that door, but it's actually a door right here. Oh. I didn't know that at the time, oh. but it's actually a door here. Oh, you can see it. Yeah. And he, whatever he was, he walked through here and I was just, and I was like, oh my God, what was that? Later on, it, it really was about almost two years later, I had just realized that was actually a door. Wow. That, yeah, you can see it too. Yeah, and I didn't know it at the time. And I and I remember that time when seeing something walk through that door. I just seen, majority of the time when I do see it, it's always the back of it. Except for the man in the when he was in the basement. I always see his the feature of the face, or, you know what I mean? It was never really clear. I just see like standing like that. And I'd be like, oh my God. But yeah, I seen him walk through there. But you've seen it once in the basement, clear. Oh, I seen it in the basement several times. I just, I wouldn't even go to the basement at nighttime. And when they moved back here and I told them, I said, the only way I go to the basement, you have to light that suck up because I'm not going down there. Hmm. As I told you, I recently moved back here. I lived for 20 years or so at my other bed and breakfast, the White Peacock. It's a little bit larger than this. And the boys had, when they were younger, had their own set of rooms. And so I just recently moved back in January. And I've had a menagerie of animals through the years, but I was down to two cats. The little gray one is a little female. And the first day we were here, she disappeared. And we figured she's gone outside. So I called all day and nothing, I got nothing. And the next morning I went out walking around the neighborhood with the yellow cat and I would go, Max, Max, and the yellow cat would go, meow, meow, trying to get her to come and he would follow me and every time I'd stop and say Max, he would call her also. We went all around the block in the neighborhood, nothing. That night I came up here and I was sleeping in this room, the, the Kentucky Daisy, and I left the doors open going in through the sitting room and I left the doors open. At 11 o'clock, I got up out of bed and thought, I'm gonna try one more time. So I went downstairs, went out the back door and called her and sure enough, she answered. And I just hear this little meow, meow. And I ran out and picked her up, brought her in, gave her some water and she was hungry and starving. And the yellow cat was so excited to see her. And he, that's her, they're buddies. They just love each other. And they were rolling around on the floor and having all kinds of fun. And I came upstairs to go to bed and they followed me. And they were running back and forth on this landing. And I went to bed. A few minutes later, I'm in bed, just about to go to sleep. And I hear a man's voice in the hallway. And I was here alone in the house. No one was here. And I thought, who is in my hallway? And this is what he said, so, you made it back okay. And a few seconds later, he says, well, you're a good kitty. And I thought, what a sweet thing to say. It was the sweetest voice. It was gentle and kind, but it was distinctively a man's voice. And then I thought, who the hell's in my house? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the person who gets up when in the movie, you see people getting up and you say, don't go out there, don't go out there. You're gonna get your head cut off, don't do it. But I'm the one who goes. And so I came out of here ready to confront whoever it was. And the cats were sitting right there. Their head was facing that direction. Their, t their bottoms were right together. And they were just sitting there. And both of them had their heads up and they were going like this, looking up and just kept moving around like they were listening to somebody. Wow. <laughs> and that was it. Right here? Yeah, right here. Wow. Right here, and I, I, I don't know who it was, Mr. Houghton, maybe somebody who died and was, you know, we don't have a record of people who were embalmed or prepared for burial here. Right. We don't have any record of that. Could be any soul. Could be anybody. It was a, it was a mortuary for about eight years. So well, I don't know. What do you, what is the, the most frequently 
um, experienced type of activity. It seems to be the cord aisle suite, and we'll go in there. Okay. I think you should sleep there oh, tonight. No. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, I think okay. you should. So one of you might want to sleep here. This is yeah. a great room, and the wedding suite is a great room. This looks like a good place for me. And this has a nice sitting room. Wow, wow. that's very cool. Yeah. Now, when the when the Houghtons owned the house, this was a sleeping porch, and so there would have been cots all around. And the children in the summertime, they'd open all the windows, and the kids would sleep here, wow. so they could keep cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is the little bathroom port, and it has another naked lady. <laughs> and let me see where that light switch is. Is that the... Oh, firecrackers. Right? I guess. Yeah, I think it must be. Pretty close. And this is their room. Oh. You should sleep in. Well, this is yours. This is the Corridile suite. And this is the room in which, in the last few years, we seem to have had the greatest amount of activity. Really? Ghostly activity. And what's happened? And the most common thing that's told to me by GIF is that sometime between 2 and 2.30 in the morning, they have been awakened when a small child comes into the room and is patting them on the cheek. But when they come to full wakefulness, there's no one there. It's just an impression, but it's realistic enough that one woman went so far as to get up and go out on the landing and awaken every guest in this house. <laughs> and I was sleeping here this night, that night, and I was on the third floor. I heard all this commotion. I used to give my guests matching bathrobes, all white terry cloth bathrobes. Mm -hmm. And when I came down from the third floor to the second floor and opened the door, they were all out there in their bathrobes. And it's the first time I'd seen it. And I thought, oh my God, they've turned into a cult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. I, I shut the door real quick. And then I got a little braver and I opened the door and then they saw me and they started coming toward me. I thought, zombie cult, yeah. zombie cult. <laughs> and I shut the door again. And then I walked out and I said, what is wrong with you people? And they, the, whoever, you know, had uh, gotten scared and everything, they said, something happened in my room, somebody touched me on the face, and uh, anyway, we got that all straightened out. Mm -hmm. But apparently, it's happened over and over again. This room <laughs> seems to attract this little girl. And what's the history of this room? We don't really know. We, really? we don't. We don't know really what room she died in or anything. We just know that these were the children's rooms. And what else has happened in here besides the... Mostly just that, except that I've had a lot of guests who have looked outside just before dusk and saw a little girl playing outside. And sometimes they'll see it early in the morning. They'll open the window and look out the window and see a little girl in the backyard. Now, when I first bought this house, I met a girl who was two blocks over, and she was Cherokee Indian. She was half. Her mother was full-blooded, and she had inherited her mother's house. And she had two little children, she was single, and I had two little boys. And so, we became friends. I was in my 30s, but she was in her 20s, early 20s. And we became friends, and we would go for a walk, maybe two or three times a week. And one day she said, there's something I need to tell you. And I said, what is it? She said, when I was little, which would have been in the 1970s, uh, she said, when I was little, when I was a little girl, I used to play in your backyard. And I said, you did? She said, yes, I played with the little girl who was there. Now, Irene, who died in this house, died in 1907. But she says, yes, I played with this little girl in the backyard. And I would come over, I would sneak out of my mother's house, I would come over here, and this little girl would step from behind a tree and we would play for an hour or so. And then I would have to go home. And I would turn around and I would turn back to look at her and she would be gone. And then I would go home. She just thought she'd gone inside. One day, her mother followed her over here. And she said, what are you doing in this backyard? She said, I play with a little girl. She's really nice, but she never talks to me. She just plays, we just play, but I never hear a word, she never laughs, nothing. 
and her mother, who was full-blooded Cherokee, said, that child is in the spirit world, and she's very lonely, and she's seeking you out for comfort. And she didn't tell her not to come back. She just explained to her that she was a spirit child. And that girl is supposed to be here, what people report. People. Oftentimes. See outside. They see, here they'll look and out, out there. Late, out, late afternoon, they'll look out and they'll see a little girl in the yard or early in the morning. Wow. You know, seven or eight o'clock in the morning, you'll see a little girl. girl. Yeah, I do think it's the yeah. same girl. Can you show us the entrance to the third floor? Because I don't think yeah. we we don't even know where it is <laughs> oh. at this point. We haven't been up here. Oh, this is the third floor. I don't know if it's locked. Now you see this, see this dead boat? I locked that dead boat that night, and we came up here. You have to remember this, all this one here, but it was a bed off in here. Mm -hmm. It was a bed off in here, and uh, and I locked the door, and I felt something get in the bed with me. <laughs> Where's the bed? That is oh, it's sneaky. not here no more. But it used to be a bed right here. Yeah, yeah. It used to be a bed right here, and <laughs> when I got in the bed to go to sleep, it got in the bed with me. It feels just wow, heavy up here. Something. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. This is definitely. Like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling like yeah. again that. What do you What do you think like would be charged. up here? Like from I, what you experienced. I, I actually think I think it was a little girl. Really? Yeah. I do. I think it was a little girl. Is there any uh, Is there any spirit that kind of spooks you the most, or kind of is a bad vibe? I never got a real bad vibe. I just get that uncomfortable feeling. I don't come in this house when it's dark, and I don't come in here by myself at night time. A lot of time I try to be the first one to leave a little bit. And if the guest is leaving, I'm leaving right behind them. When we just do murder dinners only, I'm gonna leave right when they leave, I leave. I don't ever stay in the house by myself at night time. How about the man in the basement? Does he have a feel with the top hat for you? That's well, he don't scare me, but it's just the idea. I never had anything ever really frightening me here. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that, like something evil, nothing like that. I never experienced the evil part of it. I just feel the uncomfortableness of it. And like sometimes the house can be really agitated where I can hear like, like I could be in the kitchen doing something and I hear a lot of walking. Or sometime every now and then I might hear some thumping. You know, like something that got knocked down. Would the thumping or the noise come from any particular floor it, or place? You know, I sometimes I used to tell her uh, when, like, when she had people come here and want to bless the house, I say make it make the house agitated. It seemed like it get more busy and, and make a little bit more uh, noise than it normally do. Like I could be in the bordella and then I can hear somebody in the hallway whispering my name, and I'll come out and be looking. And um, I could be like, if I'm the only one here, I can hear somebody say, Michelle. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and I know I locked the door because I can't tell you if it's somebody human or the ghost. Mm -hmm. And I read, and I feel like the ghost is not gonna do anything to me, but I don't wanna guess somebody, like somebody off the street just walk in and I'm not really prepared for. I used to run up and down the stairs a lot. And I had to find a way to get my work done because I kept thinking people was coming in the house and it wasn't the ha nobody coming in, it was the house. So I would lock the front door and the back door and I would try to get as much as I can get done at a certain time so I can let it have the upstairs to itself. <laughs> and I really would let them have the upstairs to itself. And I would literally have to, when I go downstairs, I would literally blast the TV so I don't hear them upstairs. Huh. Cause they, I mean, at sometimes it would be like a lot of walking and somebody coming down the stairs all the time. Uh, I, I experienced a little bit of everything. Everybody said, what's this most haunted part of the house? The whole house. Just, you mentioned you, you feel it's a little girl. Mm -hmm. Why? When I hear a little, like, like a little noise in the hallway, I feel like that's her. Yeah, I just get the feeling like it's her. And when I notice the woman, I see her to tell of her dress. And when the man, I used to see the feature sometime of him. I don't see him all the time, except for when in the basement. The basement's more the places I see him at the most. 
and or in the parlor bedroom downstairs. I've seen them a couple of times in there. And so you wouldn't spend the night in here alone no. in the dark. No. <laughs> no. I don't. I don't even think I want to stay here if she was here. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to stay here. Oh, that's perfect. She won't even ask me to house it. Believe that we, I cannot believe can we that that just happened. Can we just what tell us what, what happened? Oh you have it on? Did yeah. You do that? No, 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 no. No. Oh, look at my arms. That was. I'm just like total. Was cool. There was like and static. That, was not, that just this light? Not, that, that okay, was not she's cool. leaving. The light. <laughs> okay. Yeah, wow. Nice. Wow. There's like a charge. Oh my oh, god. Jeez. Window. Jesus. Holy I god. cannot believe okay. we were not filming she left. That. That was spooky, man. Oh my gosh, wow. That was bizarre. What the f***? Okay. Jeez, why did that happen when we were filming? Seriously. It always happens. It does. Okay, so, just a minute ago, I have chills on my body, oh man. actually, right Look now. Look at my arms, yeah. Let's just ask a question, then. Okay. Okay, but tell what. If that was you, could you make this light flicker again? That was insane. Um, so we were right here with Michelle. Yeah, just talking to her, um, standing with me right here. Wait a second. And Jeff. Is that got to be plugged in there? It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, I was right here. Jeff was right yeah. here, yeah, yeah. and she was right here. We just filmed a TikTok, and she was talking about uh, one of her experiences. And this light Dude. literally just went off and then went back oh on. Oh my gosh! And the moment that, that happened, she was like, "She's like, I'm, I'm out of here," <laughs> and just left. She just left. Yeah. She's like, house. I'm not. She wouldn't even talk about it. But she just left. That wasn't a. It wasn't a house power outage. No, no, no. And we, I'm so mad that we weren't. There's lights that. on here. These. That's the only light that went out. That, and that's right so there. annoying because you just said, "Wish we got this on film." Uh, she was telling us a different story. Man. And but then she right just then, quit and just left. This light literally just flickered on and off. Like, I, tr I tried to get her to stay just that. outside, out here on the stairs, just to stay here, to catch her as she was leaving down, and she just left. I don't know. Okay, we better go down there. Yeah. Wait a, okay. okay. Let's go. If you are here in this room. That came from upstairs. Really? Above you? Yeah. Oh, that is okay. Just a second. Dude, this is crazy. Dude, I'm actually kind of creeped out. Okay, if, if that's you giving us a sign, can you turn off this light again? Or walk over here? I think we better go. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, we're gonna go say goodbye to Michelle. Okay. Yeah. That literally right there was movement know, above us, know, like knocking your footsteps. I think we're going to have to get rolling. Yeah, we're going to have shot both interviews, yeah. Okay, ready? This is the most active spot in the house, is up here. And they will frequently... What the? Did that light just... Do you see that? Huh. That light just came off. Left. That light to the left just turned off. What was that? Oh my god. It did. What? Did we, did we unplug in? that? Dude, or, that plug goes to... That light literally just turned yeah. off on no, camera. No, no, no. Huh. That is insane. I just felt yeah. I got that on camera. So this is where the children would play. Yes. And they had they actually had a trapeze and they had a pommel horse and they had a bowling alley like right here. And what experiences I guess do people have up here? What's what's the why is this the most haunted part of the house? They just come up here and they've had all kinds of experiences. They've had the doors opening and closing, which is something we hear often. And they hear a music box, but we don't know where it is cuz we never found it. But they have, you know, they all have a different experience. Have That's you different. had anything happen to you up here? I really haven't. I was okay. I've lived I've had a bed here. And their children had 
an Asian alcove. And I always felt like I was really protected up here. Hmm. I always felt like it was a safe place. But people think that this is the most active. They active. think this is the most haunted, yeah. I have to tell you, these kids had a great childhood. I've read records that they have uh, recorded for, and, and they do recordings, you know, of people who have lived in the old days and yeah. stuff. They had a great childhood. Yeah. Their mother was very kind. She was uh -huh. very sweet to them. They all got educated. They all had a, they all were offered college, and most of them went to college and mm -hmm. went to further on. One of them worked for NASA when I, mm -hmm. one of the grandchildren, and his, they had had a great childhood. Yeah. And uh, I guess and they're still here. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My other question would be, what do people think is the um, scariest part of the house? What's the, what's the creepiest energy? I think the basement is the place where they've had, but you know, this is not like a frightening thing. Yeah. This yeah. is not one like one of the houses where people, horror things happen. Yeah. yeah scary. No. These people loved each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. whatever spirits are here, they're here because they loved it so much. I think there was something yeah. great in their childhood. Right. It's going to be an interesting yeah. night tonight. Yeah, when the light went off and when you guys were just walking there, I kind of, Again, kind of like Michelle, you were talking about from the yeah, peripheral, vision, peripheral vision. I kind of saw a little like I don't even know what to explain it. If it was a small shadow dart, kind of like, but I, I don't know. I never know, you know. Yeah. What's up everybody, it's Colin here. Tonight we are in Guthrie, Oklahoma at the infamous Stone Lion Inn. This is known as one of the most haunted places in the state, if not the most haunted. You can read about it all over the internet. We've been here all night. We already conducted interviews with the owner of the house, someone who's worked here for 30 years. And let me tell you, we've experienced some things that we cannot explain. In those interview clips you saw earlier, we, <laughs> our interview subject literally ran out because the light turn on and off behind us. Then we heard footsteps running above us. We've had doors open and shut. The We just put our static cameras inside the building. And on the third floor, supposedly the most active area, we turned off the lights up there, went down the stairs, turned the lights off and shut the door. We went downstairs and, and set some stuff up. Then when we walked back up, the door was wide open. The lights were on, almost like it was calling for us to go back up there. So it is very, very creepy in there. But we've got all of our equipment set up. We're just gonna head right in and start investigating because it's 1 a.m. already. So, uh, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. We got a surprise treat for you. It's got two doors. So, we're going to start tonight's investigation here in the parlor room. This is obviously a place where people used to come gather. Guests would arrive here at the home, take seats here in this area. There's a smoking room out back, lots of activity reported in here. And we're gonna start this episode out because this is a Victorian era home with a Victorian era haunting with something from the Victorian era. So follow me. So as you guys online know, supposedly if you create your own Ouija board, it's supposed to be a lot more effective and it's supposed to be more, I guess, dangerous. So we said we wanted to buy a Ouija board today because we didn't bring one with, but couldn't find one. So we went to Walmart and got this and we're gonna add something special to it because back in the Victorian era, a lot of seances were done. That was the era of the Ouija. So maybe the spirits here will recognize this form of, commu of communication. And even though we're not gonna do a full on session, we're gonna just use this to open a portal. And I'm gonna add along with Jeff using our diabetes kit a drop of blood to the board before we open the portal because a lot of different people involved with different forms of witchcraft brujeria stuff like that believe that the human blood actually contains a lot of energy and is a key uh, and is essential in a lot of ceremonies so uh, let's do this So, almost looks like a Stranger Things uh, <laughs> piece of art there. It comes to the important part. So, this is diabetes supplies. Don't, don't try this at home. Um, 
when I am shedding this blood, I am giving the power to this board and to this portal from myself, my own soul, my own energy. summoning ritual we do have a planchette jeff is going to light a candle i am going to operate the planchette say some words attempt to open the portal and we're going to screw this camera in over there uh film on another camera that's over here and do an estes method as soon as we do this so, okay guys so we're gonna now begin with this biggest blood seance we're gonna have jeff light the candle first okay when i light this candle He's gonna droop the candle wax on the leash board. If there is anybody in this house, we are politely asking you to come out tonight and speak with us. If you've seen a Ouija board, okay, once again, lady, try it out. Whether you died here or you just decided to come over here. Whether you're happy here, whether you're angry, it doesn't matter. We're opening a portal for any and every spirit to come through tonight and speak with us. So we're just gonna leave the portal open. We're inviting you to come speak with us and to interact with us tonight. Follow the sound of our voices. put the REM pod right on top of the Ouija board. So if anything tries to play with the Ouija board, we're gonna pick it up. I'm gonna film on this camera. Okay. Why don't you start the ovulus up? Why don't you turn that light off and turn night vision on? Okay, so before we start using our devices, if there's anybody in the house, can you walk over to us or give us some sort of a sign that you're here? Jeff, again, this is Colin. We're here just to try to interact with you. We're friendly. All we want to do is try to find out if you're here, why you're here. So if you would, give us any kind of sign that you're here. Work with our instrument we have over there that's not going to harm you. Go touch it. Give us a sound. Anything. Can you knock like this for us on something or walk around for us? Come on closer then to us if that was you. Can you come over and 
make that device go off over by Colin on the Ouija board. Could you just let us know that you are here in some way? Am I, am I imagining something? Or is it those crystals moving? I can't tell. What are we talking about? If that was you, come over here. I'm not here to harm you. We just want to have a talk. We want to play and hang out. If that is you, like I said, we're not mean. We're just here to hang out. Keep coming. Follow my voice. All we want to do is relax, talk. Come on, come over here. Just play. We want to play some games. All we want to do is talk to you. That's it's almost literally like responding to what I'm saying. I'm gonna put this in here. Okay, Colin was talking to you behind us. Come into this room, if you would, and we're, we're, we're here just to communicate with you. Maybe touch that little box I have laying on the floor. Again, keep coming. Come into the room and talk to us. Again, keep coming. Come into the room and talk to us. Again, keep coming. Come into the room and talk to us. You're welcome to come in and sit with us inside here. Sound of our voices. Can you please 
just let us know that you can hear us somehow. Maybe move something in the room. Turn the lights on and off for us. Come and turn on the Ovulus. I think we should try it. Okay. Hit. So, so the Ovulus. Ovulus fine we have. Now we have a new speaker. We're just going to turn it on. We've never done it before with the speaker. So um, I'm not sure how loud it is. Let's just turn it on. Okay, do you want to say anything, Colin? If anybody is here with us, once again, we're going to be walking throughout this house. But for now, come over here and Speaking. talk with us. We just want to find out who you are so we can have more fun together. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Since. Wow. trough for a spirit and we're going to set it uh, on each side of the obvious and see if this lets him take up some uh, food or energy and try to talk to us a little bit better. Burn. Pattern. Burn. Is Burn. 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 The guy that she was talking about in a second. Burn. we got to remember that. Burn. Okay. Okay, we're going to give you some energy here. Okay, an altar. The pattern will alter. The pattern will alter. Vern's pattern will alter. Cycle. Wow, hmm. maybe we're getting something here. Zinc. Oh. Hmm. Just keep keep talking. If you're using this energy. Jog. If anybody online knows what this could possibly mean, feel yeah. free to comment yeah. it too. Yeah. Autumn. Autumn. Do you mean the basement? Presidents. I think that we should do the Estes method and this at the same time. Dude, who's up there? Bottom. Look on the bottom somewhere. That's. A that's <laughs> Bach. That's the composer. Okay, everybody. So we're now going to try the Estes method once again. We've moved the camera angles. That's the area where we're hearing the noises from. We've got two EM pumps running. We've got the ovulus running. And if you don't know what the Estes method is, you basically put headphones on and listen to a spirit box and read out any responses you hear while wearing a blindfold for sensory deprivation. But I'm going to take this one step further. I'm going to actually lay back on top of the Ouija board. And Jeff is going to be the one asking the questions. Plan. What did it say? Plan. Out. Yeah, that is the plan. Do you want us out of here? Discernment. Discernment. Discerning, Discerning spirits. spirits. I just had talked about that all week. Cell. Discernment. Character. Heart. Wow. Holy moly. Cell, your character and your heart? What Cell, you character and heart. Discernment. Huh. God, it's almost like, you know, discerning spirits we talked about being good and evil. Mm -hmm. It's like, cell, your character, your heart. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? 
Daddy. Daddy. This is my father, yes. Are you looking for your dad? Oh, are you the... the seven-year-old girl? Are you the seven-year-old girl who died in here? You can come and talk to us if it's you. I'm not your daddy. I'm his daddy. But we'd like to talk to you. Don't be afraid. in case these make you afraid. 60 again. 60 again. Daddy, 60 again. You're okay. about to be 60. <sighs> I'm going to be 60 very shortly. That's We just mentioned that when he came weird. in. When we were bringing the stuff in, he goes, wow. how many dad, how many six-year-old dads do this Density. with their son? One. Are you here with us in the house? Can you give us a sign? Cut. Cut, Colin. Most. I cut things. most things. I cut most things. We. Oh, yes. Okay. I, you said I cut most things, and then you said we. Are you with other people? Can you tell Colin your name? No. How come? Are you are you afraid? Who are you afraid of? Tell me. You. Who. Don't be afraid of me. I'm the man. Who are you then? What's your name? <clears throat> if you're the man, what's your name? Thank you. Tell Colin. No. <sighs> Design, 50. Okay. Bill. I think this is... 12. Gonna... Look at me. Or look at the door. Oh, man. I'm... Wow, there's some energy charge in here. Okay, why do you want me to look at the door? Who is there? There's two doors back here that you can... There's two doors back here that you can. There's two doors back here that you can. Having a blast. But those are my plans. It almost sounds like there's two spirits. Well, we had Vern and Bill. Are they men or women? Tell me if they're men or women, the two spirits. Can you tell Colin? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. Use your your energy and tell tell Colin your name through that device. Loser. Hmm. How about um again, right now how many spirits are here? How many are here with us? Seventeen. Oh, Seventeen spirits? Through the years. Through the years? Seventeen people? There's seventeen of you here? What are you doing right now? Peace. Oh. After. Okay. Oh, something just scared me. I feel like I got touched on my foot. Peace after. It seems like you're using your energy for this box to form like a sentence. Peace Someone. after. One. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Sure. <laughs> Maybe Mama. that was the person apologizing Some. to me. It just said oh my sorry. God. Oh, it's a, the big toe. It just said that. Did you just touch Colin's toe? Tell Colin again your name. Just if there's 17. Do they have to? Yes. If there's 17 of you here, one of you can say your name. Say your name. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. Come on. Show some courage. Okay, would one of you please say your name? I'm being respectful. I'm 
getting a little bit irritated because you definitely can do that. Aggression. Yeah, I, I am being I am being more aggressive. I apologize. Please tell Colin your name, one of you, please, or say it on this box. Mm-mm. Wow. Why not? I kind of feel like we need to go into the animal room. Uh, are, mm. you, are you awake, bud? Mm-hmm. Okay, you're not really communicating. I was just not really getting that much. Really? Mm-mm. Okay, it's been talking a lot on here. I've asked, I asked a couple of times, you know. I just wanted to avoid. Can you please tell me your name? And they right away would say no. Sure. And said, dude, look at animal. Guy. Okay, okay, this is the deal. Is, um, it's, it's come back to hunt animal. I think we have to go in that room with the, the animals. Okay. Okay. Over there? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go over to the room with the taxidermy animals. There it is. What we're doing right now is essentially sitting for a little bit, trying to do some in-depth spirit boxing. Oh, sorry. Jesus, it's just pitch black in here. So what we're trying to do here is some in-depth spirit boxing. And uh, after this, we're going to head to the basement. Uh, which is where all the poltergeist activity really focuses, and then go up to the third floor, which is supposedly the scariest part of this whole place. But it's already 2.30 in the morning, so we're uh, we're really pushing here. Yeah, well, we're gonna do it though. I'm gonna turn the spirit box on. Okay, would you say one of your names that you said out there, why you wanted us to come in here? Who, who said that, what was your name? In the other room, you told us, at least I felt you told us you wanted to come into this room hunting um, animals, you said, and we're here. So we're just going to ask you questions and answer us because you want us to come. What's your name? Zach. Okay, can you say your name clearer for us? Check out. Check out. Got a shooting pain oh, in your arm. In my right here. Oh. Can you turn the light on? Oh, what weird. You see that? What's this? Oh, what's this? Look at this. Look at right here. That's exactly where I was telling oh you. My gosh. What the f? Okay. Wait, it's film, film, film that. Film I know, that. I know, I'm trying. But film with your I'm iPhone. Just, it's a fing burning. Shh, dude. Just a second. What? I know. It's fing burning. Look at that. Right. Look at this right, right here. here. This I literally just felt that, dude. Okay. Let's just, let's what? just watch that just a second. Look at that from here. You can really dude, see the redness. I'm telling you, that's wow. burning on me. Okay. You can watch that footage. Okay. I literally just felt a really sharp wait, tinge of this. pain. Okay, wait a second. I'm sorry. There. Oh, I think you can see it from right here the best. Okay, you got a line. Right from here to here. Yeah, and it's really tender right there. Just to show my other arm too. Yeah, let me see. There's nothing. Second, the light's changing. Okay, let me see here. Look at that. Hold still. Put that That's back here on your wrist next to each other. Right here. Right there. Okay, yeah, it literally goes yeah. right here. I just the shot pain through my arm. Did you scratch Colin? Did you scratch me? Oh. Oh, that's it. oh, I'm getting anxious all of a sudden. Hold on. Did you just scratch me right now? Did you scratch me? Johnny, no, he's trying. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm having like fucking heart pain almost. Really? Chest pain. Desk. Okay. Metaphysics. Desk. Okay. A go. Fine. Are you sure? Tracked. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, are you gonna feel okay? The side of my chest is like shooting pain. Do you wanna take a break? No. Well, let's let's call I think we should leave this room because you're you're feeling I think overwhelmed here. 
let's let's try one more spirit box. Really? Yeah. Why don't you ask? Are you are you causing me pain right now? Okay, I'm asking you who scratched Colin. Something. Okay, something. I kind of thought I need to call him out. You know what I mean? Can I be a little aggressive? Yeah, you, you, you go. Uh huh. We're not I'm leaving. Not, I'm not gonna go. Tell me your name. Walk Where are you in the house? Why the, why did you scratch me? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, you want to go downstairs to the basement? Yeah. So are you, are you going to be down in the basement if we so, come get you? If so, we come look for you? Yeah. Look at the, it is kind of red. Are you, do you see that? Does this look kind of red to you? Take it. Can you take a photo so I can see what that looks like? Or just take a video of it? Oh, this is yours, but... So just to document this, this is kind of going away. It just came. It's still pretty obvious, though. But I just was pointing out to Jeff on camera that this hurt, and it's kind of red. Do you see that? I think if we can turn the light on like right, right here. Uh, I think you see it better. You know, you can see it from here. Okay. It's strange. This looks almost like wow. it could be a fucking bite mark or Imagine. something. Doesn't that? It appeared as we were looking. Yeah, and I was I literally told you I felt the shooting pain through my arm right there. And that's the same shit that's happening right here. Under my spider. Weird. You know what? I never even thought about it. What? But yeah, no. Okay. Why don't we get under the basement? Okay, okay. We're, we're, we're leaving. So anything further to say to us? Your last chance. Oh, oh, I need to have to do something. Yeah, what was that? Something just happened with the night vision. But the didn't infrared. It, didn't, it literally just didn't. Damn. Oh, 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 oh! What in the hell? Dude, I'm like feel. Yo, oh, what the f is going oh on with it, God, man? Dude. It's fucking turning Don't over look at by my, itself. Look at my. I have. I'm totally, <sighs> totally static. Dude, oh my what God. is happening? Okay, guys, on camera, what's happening is our IR light is going on and off. Oh my God. Oh, dude. Shoot, I'm fing. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dude, I'm actually kind of afraid. I feel like I'm seeing shadows. Dude, it's like your heart's glowing right here. What in the hell is going on, man? Are you playing with our light? Okay, that. How is that possible? I feel like I'm seeing like shadows. Okay, we might have to. We might have to call this here tonight. Okay, so Pete, we're gonna stay here right now. What's happening is the IR light on the camera is going on and off. That's why it's dark right now. Now <laughs> here it is. Okay, can you give us a sign that you're here again? Are you playing with that button? Dude, I'm like... And it's, it's, not, the, it's not a pattern. It's different amounts of time every time. And, this, and that started to happen right when I was talking wow. about being, feeling this scratched. This is really bitten. bizarre, man. I mean, honestly. You know that? I really do feel like I like can almost see like a shadow. I think, I just we, should, feel I think we should go to the base. You know, I just feel kind of sick to my stomach, actually. Yeah. I gotta kind of go, man. I actually do. Yeah, let's go. <sighs> yeah, I've never seen a light do that. Wow. And that, we didn't even touch it either. Look at how bright that is. Yeah, just do that. Okay, because there wasn't a warp in here. I have, oh jeez, what was that? Is that camera still rolling? Yeah, it's a camera. Okay. 
Okay, because I there wasn't a warb in here. I have Oh jeez, what was that? Okay, because I there wasn't a warb in here. I have Oh jeez, what was that? That sound okay, oh, just that came from this door yeah, yeah, right like here. Door to the bang. parlor. To the parlor where the Ouija board is. Okay. Everything. Okay, why don't we should we put it back here? Yeah. And leave it? Yeah. But you point it where? Oh set it right here. I've got like a Definitely in my head again. I'm getting my head. That was that very was spooky that I've seen. Okay, that was very strange. Dude, the light's not good. I mean, this light isn't this. Now, now it's constant. <laughs> okay, now that's, that no that's freaky. That's freaky. We didn't change the light. Look it. It's stable. It's like it almost that's, left. Yes. That's what I feel like. <laughs> Like I think it left through this, these doors. Do you have okay, a Okay then, to explain, we were just trying to leave and this light started to tweak out. My arms are burning. I feel I have a mark on me. We got really freaked. So we were leaving. As we were leaving, this door leading into the parlor room with the Ouija board and everything where we started, like shook violently by itself. And then the light that it was being manipulated stopped flashing so it's almost like it was in the room with us it followed us and it went back into the other room but we're so, gonna leave this camera running in here yeah hopefully something appears that we'll look back and find now okay Okay, so we're going to now head down to the basement. We just walked out, we've got the other camera. We're in IR already. This is where it gets really freaky. Well, I guess the rest is freaky enough in there. And a flashlight. To me. Okay, I mean. This is the basement. Okay, this is where they saw the, the man with the stove. Top hat. Okay. Well, I died too. What do you mean? This pen died. Really? Oh no. Yeah. That can't be. Okay, there's no way, dude. That's not possible. I'm not kidding you. This is an issue because you gotta think about this. This isn't here. This is an actual. This is a. This is just a freaking little light. Okay? I mean, if you just think about it. It's a little light, and look at brand new, brand new, triple A, and look at the type of battery I've got in there. These are two, look at this. Two brand new no, batteries. No, but, but more importantly, bud, look. Okay, can you, yeah. can you see what it is? Where's the name? Yeah, right there. Okay, what's it say? Ultimate Lithium. Ultimate Lithium. These things, two of them, brand new Ultimate Lithium batteries? I mean, think about that. I mean, think about that. I mean, think about that. What the hell? Dude, I'm getting... I'm f***ing freaked the f*** dude, out right now. Oh my god, there's... Dude. Dude, I am freaking... Like, there is something down here. Yo, what the f***? What? I'm, I have full body chills. Hold on. Can you grab the camera? Okay, just a second. Hello?
don't think it's evil, but I just think there's something going on. My neck hurts. Okay, let's back up a little bit, bud. Okay, watch out for the camera. Okay, did the, uh, that light's still on. Do I have anything on my neck? Dude, this is crazy. Okay, now that's Wait, not... I, Are you serious? It? What well, is just it? Not, just hold on. It's a scratch, dude. Okay, I literally just felt okay. my neck hurting. What this. is it? It's a scratch. Uh, red. Can you at least flip the thing so I can Look see it? it? Oh! Yes, I know, dude. What? what Shine. It's welted. It's welted. What the f? Yeah, Wait, see. no. There's no way that that just happened. Look how thin that is. How can? How is that so thin? Okay, it's like lines. I've never seen you know any. What? Have you ever seen anything oh, like that? Yeah. Me either. This is crazy. That, that, I mean, I was, I guess, do you think that that could be for me with the Estes? Have you ever seen something thin like that? Could that be my f***ing, um, headphones, do you think? No, dude, that just appeared. Let's look, so Let's look on your other side. That's so thin. That's so thin. What the hell, dude, though? You got, you what? got a scratch here. Oh, oh, wait, what do you mean? You have a scratch on the side. exact same thing? Hey, why would you have it on both sides? See? I can't, I can't look at it. Can you take a picture? Okay, here. It just went, it went off on its own. I'm not doing anything. Okay, well... Just calm down. Dude, calm. shine your light. Shine your light over there. Okay, we're, I think we're going to move out of here. No, no, no. Okay, but let me hey, see. At least okay, take first, a photo so First, let me get this. on camera. Pull your hair back. Let me see. I, I don't even want to sleep here tonight, okay. man. Okay, this side too. Wow, that's weird. What, what, what do you, would you describe it as looking like? Okay, just let me look at it here. here. Can you take a photo okay. of it so yeah. I can look at it? Okay. Because I'm kind of freaking out because okay. I can't even see it. Here, you hold the camera. Let's let it roll. Hold the camera. I'd describe it more like a man. I feel like I'm gonna freak out right now. What the f dude? Yeah, look at that. That's like and look at it splits. Look at how, and what's what's this shit too yeah, that's on the I'm side saying. of that's it? That's what I'm saying. Is that is trippy? That's your right side. I know, but look at. Dude, what? Dude, 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 dude. I know, but look at. Oh. I know, but look at. Oh. Is there somebody down here with us or what? Dude, that was a shuffle. What the f This is very f scary. Dude, this is the most. Somebody's living down here. I'm getting cold too, and it's hard to breathe. What the? What are those? F Noises, dude. Okay, but oh, I've got a. My ear is going completely deaf. My arm is still burning too. Do you think this has something to do with the Ouija? I, I you the, know the I, f blood ritual. I don't. You know. I think we have to. That smell. is because that is straight up freaky about my okay. neck. It is. How do you even? Okay, when you go back and hear that noise, though, that was like a major shuffle, like a box moving or something yeah, to me. Sure. Okay. If you're down here with us. I don't know if you can scratch, it's but blurry. if you did, this is blurry as crap. Okay, there it came back. If you did scratch me, I need you to get out here right now. That is not okay. Can you? Where are you in this room? Okay. Do you want to bank that device? Come over by this device. Or make one of those balls go off right here in front of us. Dude, that's the only time. Oh my god. What? 
What was this? Flashlight reflection over there. What's like? Yeah, this is some bad mojo down there. That is dude. very strange, though. And okay, but remember, I was scratched just, at Ohio State Reformatory, uh -huh. right? Like that. Mm -hmm. That was. Did you feel like it was like a burning? I I literally just felt like, kind of not not a burning, just a tiny amount of like. Okay, oh, so let's just, let's just hurts. think about it too, and we'll look at that, and you'll put it on film. Even if you had fingernails, Colin doesn't. You don't have fingernails, dude. I mean, do you want to show yeah, it? Tru I mean, truthfully, you're, you're yeah, truthfully, you're not I, a fingernail guy. I have really bad yeah. anxiety, so I pick yeah. all my fingernails off. It's like, and and I do too. Like, look at here. I'll even I mean, try to. Can you? <laughs> I mean, I can't really see with this light, but yeah, I mean, there's no way. There's no way. Here, let me go to this real quick. There you go. That's trying my how, absolute best. How do you best. go back to up here, buddy? Let's look. That's trying my okay. absolute hardest to scratch myself. I mean, it's a just a big thick red line. But your 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 neck. Let me look at your neck with this light. It might be fading. Maybe it is. It is. Oh my God! I just saw a okay. red. Hello. My head's really full again. I feel like something's... What the hell is that? Oh, I've got like total chills again. I kind of feel like I don't want to leave, you know, turn my back. Oh, there was an orb that went through here. Are you a bad spirit? being scratched. I, I, I don't like that idea. Being alone in a f room tonight? No, I know. After this? I know. And this? Can you turn your light off though? Oh god. Okay, now that it's yeah. completely pitch black down here. What is that? Oh my god, I am so scared right now. I can't believe how much movement there's been down here. God, I saw something right beside you with my peripheral vision. I, f I, f I don't want to wanna stay right. here tonight, man. I mean, I can, but f this. It's like hard I've to never breathe. Felt my like throat this. isn't closing up. But there's there's somebody down here. Are you yeah. the man in the stove top hat? That's, that's... This is a stove pipe. Where are you? Dude, if something moves, I'm out of here. It's above us, dude. That was up here. Dude, I just sent that back. Here. Can you throw one of these boxes? There, there is something down here. Okay. Whatever it is. Yeah. Stay down here, please. Yes. You know what, Colin? What? Imagine that circle of light around you, okay? Just visualize a circle of light, a protective light. And you're not allowed to come out of the basement. You can't follow us. Yo, something just threw a f***ing rock Dude, at that us. was a rock. That was a pebble. If you can throw a rock, you can throw something bigger at us. Dude, if something throws though, I got, I'm, I'm gone. Okay, I think we should go. Okay. We've had enough. That's crazy though, that right... We've had enough. <laughs> that, that's the train. Right when we were leaving a f What, a rock gets tossed over here? Yeah. What was that? Uh, I think upstairs. it was over in here. Over in here. Let's go finish on the third floor. It's gonna be interesting if there's anything on that static camera. Fuck. Yeah. I really wanna see that footage. You ready? You ready to go? Let's go. Watch your second.
I was just gonna go use the restroom, but I looked in the mirror. And well, this, you have to pull this your is hair back. Okay, almost but you still, completely but gone. But you know what you, you still have though? It's weird. It's like they're, they're yeah. It's but it's raised, and they're actual lines, right? Dude, it's like one. You could never make that scratch. Oh, I I need it's to look at it. I need to look at it in, in better depth. Okay, but we need a picture again. So, um, the scratches, if you can see them or whatever you'd call that. They've like gone away, but there's welts on my neck, oh, yeah. which is really odd. I haven't had that in a very long time, so I'm just kind of spacey, kind of freaked a little bit. But it's uh, three ten in the morning. Yeah, that's we're gonna good. finally go to the upstairs, the third story at three in the morning. So. First of all, we looked through the whole home already. Couldn't find where that door noise just came from. Second of all, the SLS battery was dead already that we just charged. We have the backup, which is fully charged, so if that dies, that's gonna be good. But look at this shit. Just, this is, this just happened. And this is, you can see Courtney texted me first. I want to show it. It's 3.16. She texted me at 3.13, three Come minutes ago. See. There we go. She said, I just woke up from the most terrible dream. I love you. Said, what happened? Explaining, sent her a picture of the scratches. She said, and I said, what dream did you have? She said, you threw up this green stuff and then you started being not very nice to me, saying you didn't want to be with me anymore. Jeez, that's like, crazy. Right as we're being, I'm being like scratched, affected. She has a nightmare about me throwing up green stuff and just suddenly being the total opposite person than who I am. Yeah. Like an evil version of myself. Exactly. Wow. Literally right okay. now. So I want to, uh, this is honest to God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking about word association for, when I was in the Estes method, right? When I was, I, I thought of the color green, right? Oh, I honestly did. And I thought of, name three things, right? In my head, okay? First thing I named was vomit. Second thing, I, for whatever reason, I said banana, but I was thinking of green bananas. <laughs> and the third thing I said was uh, money. I said money. Yeah, which is weird. Word. Yeah. And then that vomit. And money, what was, and then I have bananas. So I, I thought, when you were doing the essence, I was thinking green, Cause, and then I'm like, vomit, um, bananas, mm -hmm. and money. That was the three That's things. That's insane. <laughs> and what's crazy is she said that that was a, Courtney said that was a terrible nightmare that was really scary, that she, it was so scary that she woke up and texted me in the middle of the night. She yeah. probably thought that we were asleep so, already. <sighs> okay. But, okay, let's go upstairs. Okay. Did, you, did you shut this door? Yeah, I shut it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So here we are, third floor. Supposedly the most haunted part of Stone Line Inn. It's 3.20 in the morning. You wanna go infrared? Sure. Um, to anybody that's up here, especially if you're kids, we don't wanna hurt you. 
We're only here to play and have fun and just hang out. If you need a friend, we can be your friend. So come say hi to us. To have you show up on our, our fun device right here. It's like a toy. Just show up. We'll take your picture. Oh no, I had something on my writing end. <gasps> the, did you see the flashlight just do that? No. It literally just dimmed hell out. Can you give us a sign that you're here? Can you knock or run around or... Did you touch me? No. Dude. What do you Are mean? Are you serious? No. Oh my god. Could it have been this? What? This. Dude, I know right here. I got a, I got touched like you you did this. <laughs> no. I did. Right here. Right here. Okay, can you okay, describe that? What just happened? Okay, so look look where is this is at. Okay. I was touched, like, okay, let's say your right hand came around me. It felt like your right hand came over and just did like this. Ooh. Like, and then in my... Oh, I got chills right now, Dude. man. I can't... Here, let me go back and see here. And just to show people, this is just fabric. Did you touch me? Did you? And you know what? It'd be like a... Like, maybe like a child. Oh, you're you know right. what I'm saying? Like, like this. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, look at my heart. Look at that. Oh, Do you see it? You, oh, my God. I feel like a static charge here. That's oh. eerie thinking about something reaching through that and oh. poking you. That was freaking insane. Are you in those clothes? Were you hiding? Oh, dude. Oh, oh did you catch that? Yes. Oh, my God. It was there. It was in dude. the clothes. Oh, my gosh. Do that again, please. Show us. Come out. Dude, I got no. touched. Dude, that I, I am freaking. That is fucking insane. Oh, look at my arms. Look at the goosebumps. Oh my god, dude. Look. Oh, it, it came out again. Okay. So, just to explain also to people, you got touched right here. Oh my god. Then you have the goosebumps, and then we actually, for the first oh. time this entire trip, mapped out a figure on the SLS in the exact right spot. Right here. Yeah, right where you got touched. Okay, I'm sorry if we're scaring you. Right here. Thank you for doing that. Can you come out of the clothes and show us again? Oh man, I am feeling like my arms. That literally confirmed Dude. exactly what oh, you said happened. That's crazy. I mean, I'm just, it, it's its exactly where, where, the height. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're right. It it's is. The height. It's a child's height. Look at Look at it. It's this mm -hmm. high right here. Yep. Dude, I was. I'm gonna stand here. I'm gonna stand here again if you want to try to touch me. You can try to. touch What is that? It's okay, if you wanna. If you wanna touch me, or even if you wanna, if you have a fingernail and you wanna scratch my back, I'm okay with that. I keep smelling these weird smells. I'm gonna move the clothes a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna kind of play. Where you at? Where are you at? Are you in here? I'm gonna move around. Come out. Come out and play. You're fine. If you are up here, like we've said, we don't want to hurt you. We're not mean. Can you uh, just walk over to us? I think you might have just tried to play with us. You can do it again.
but I kind of feel like that guy in the basement is making this girl hide. That's just what's coming to my thoughts, you know? I'm trying to clear my thoughts, because I don't feel good. I don't either. Okay, guys, well, we're going to do an official wrap-up tomorrow and talk more about what's happened tonight, because it's a lot to process. But it's wow. almost 4 a.m. We were up last night filming until past 1 a.m. And Dude, we were... I got to bed at 3 a.m. Yeah, I went to bed at 4. Got up at 9. And we have to be an hour and a half away from here tomorrow at 3. <laughs> so we're going to discuss what happened tonight, but... I want to kind of well, get out of here. Yeah, we're going to wrap this, but uh, good night. Okay, everybody, so it's the morning after our investigation. Jeff and I woke up. We had an absolutely amazing brunch, courtesy of the Stone Lion Inn. You guys, it was amazing. Thank you. Just want to highly recommend this place to anybody online who uh, wants a spooky night in a spooky house because this place has definitely got its fair share of spirits as we learned last night. But I wanted to ask you, yesterday on our tour, we were talking about how the entity doesn't really seem to be negative. And yet there have been these kind of physical things like something being thrown at you. Last night I was scratched in the basement area is what I would assume where it happened. And also over in uh, the gentleman's smoking room on my wrist it appeared before our lights started flickering. Has that ever happened to anybody here? When Ghost Hunters was here, they we had a, one of those sticks down there. We had a lot of uh, uh, material down there for building and it was a piece of trim board came out from the slot that it was in and hit one of the guys. But I have no idea. It's just another element to the mystery yes. of why there would be that aggressiveness. In the, and particularly in the basement. Because mm -hmm. we there. felt fine upstairs, up here. On the third floor we were more than good, but downstairs it was just kind of very loud yeah. movement, uh, the scratches. And also my fiance texted me at around 3.30 in the morning said that she had a dream where I was throwing up green liquid and cussing her out and being really mean to her. She texted me after the scratch happened and everything and we were like, what? Like out of the blue, cause she had gone to bed at you know, 11 o'clock. No, she, she called it vomit. Yeah, vomit. Oh. But you, so you've never been scratched? No, no. I, I, well, I, I was almost scratched. I was hit with the board, but it didn't leave a scratch or anything. And it, and it was kind of just glazed off of me, but it was really meant for one of the guys who was working on that crew. At the so, end of the day, though, you'd say that this place has a, a positive haunting. I've had some experiences here where I thought the house protected me. Um, we were getting broken into for a while. As some kids probably going up and down the alley saw something in the window and they were breaking in and well, actually it was liquor bottles. Uh, the, after our guests had finished a murder mystery, we had placed them back there on a buffet and the kids were breaking in and I figured it's a boy, a bunch of teenage boys and, and taking them and that happened a few times and then they broke in and stole some food and I couldn't deny anybody food so I didn't say anything. Then they broke in and took the food and cooked it here. Well, I, this is when I wasn't living here. Wow. And, and that was a little brazen. So my sister and I decided that we were gonna try to catch them in the act, because it was always happening on a Sunday night. So we parked over here in the church, church parking lot. And we waited and we waited, nobody came, and I finally got tired. And I came in the house and came into the kitchen. Suddenly the television turned on and it was just snow, and it made this horrible noise, like a cat being choked or something. It went, meow! It's a horrible noise. And it, this thought just popped into my head, get out of here, something's going to happen. And I left, and I kind of got down low, and I got out the front door, and I locked, and, I, and my sister and I went home, and we came back the next morning, and we had been broken into again. Wow. Now, if I had been here, I might have been injured. Somebody, mm -hmm. if they had found me in the house, they might have panicked or something. Not that they would be a dangerous person ordinarily, but sometimes when people feel panicked, they, you know, they might push you or hit you. Mm -hmm. And I could have been injured, but the house told me to get out. 
Wow. That's, so I had that happen. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I just want to wrap this up and say thank you for you are so having welcome. us last night. My pleasure. Absolutely. It's thank our you. pleasure, honestly. Yeah, the I, breakfast, I've the, the watching. It. It's been awesome been talking. I'm going to give you a hug too before oh, we go. Of course. Thank you so much, Becky. We can cut now that the Pope is about over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That well, feels great. Stone Lion in. Highly recommended, everybody. Thank you, everybody. We're going to hit the road. We got another episode to film tonight. Actually, it starts in an hour and a half. Pocket so, City. In Pocket City. So, uh, Good Jeff. Luck. We, we do we, we do get to hug now. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. Oh, it was good. I'm sorry, a little bit. A little yeah. hot. Oh, it's I'm definitely hot. a little sweaty. <laughs> She's making me hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the old broad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you've been awesome, really. Thank it's been it's great been talking. Awesome.